Well, good evening. This is Hello Steve coming to you on the 5th of August. And uh, I came across this article uh, the other day and it's entitled To Stop the Rise of the Extreme Right, Trudeau Must Reign in the Extreme Left. Uh, here it is, right here. And uh, it is written uh, by a chap called Goldie Hyder. And uh, he is the President and Chief Executive Officer of Hill Norton Strategies in Canada. Okay, I'm going to read you the whole thing. It is the most balanced um, piece of writing that I've seen in a long time. And it really does seem to hit the nail right on the head. And I, I guess it would sum up my point of view of the, the dangers of polarization and what needs to be done and the cause of it. While Prime Minister Trudeau was at the NATO summit in Brussels earlier this month, he spoke about the rise of populism, of aggressive nationalism, of polarization in our public discourse in Canada. Trends he linked to the anxiety people feel when they worry about how they will earn a living. Being Canada's most famous Star Wars fan, one can imagine that Mr. Trudeau was also thinking about Master Yoda's warning to the Jedi Council. Fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, and hate leads to suffering. When people worry about maintaining their family's homes or putting food on the dinner table, that fear can quickly turn to anger. Anger needs an outlet, which is why agitators on both the left and the right are eager to offer potential targets. If Prime Minister Trudeau is serious about stopping the rise of an extreme right, the best thing he can do is rein in the extreme left bring us back to the moderate middle. And as Yoda instructed, he must neither do or do not. There is no try. Canadian electors have never forced voters to choose between hard left and hard right. Most campaigns have been waged and won based on which party demonstrates that they most represent the pragmatic political middle ground. And there is a lot of people in that middle ground. Globally, however, leftists are increasingly becoming strident advocates of extreme progressivism, while the right is lured by the siren songs of populism. These dark forces are coming to Canada just in time for next year's federal election. What's worse is that they mobilize each other. When liberals move left, conservatives move right. Well, duh! Yeah, and that's what we're seeing. Many have described this as the political equivalent of Newton's third law of motion. For every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Perhaps the closest Canadian example of this political physics was seen in the recent Ontario provincial election. In adopting an agenda further to the left than Andrea Howis, NDP, Kathleen Wynne's Liberals paved the path to victory for Ford Nation and the Progressive Conservatives. Some have argued that Ford voters were nostalgic for some glorified past. That's wrong. They're more concerned about the present and the future. They're not pining for yesterday. They want to face tomorrow's challenges and prepare for tomorrow. When governments focus too intensely and too intensively on a hard left agenda, as some argue the win liberals did, it leaves them open to the accusation that they're ignoring economic concerns and vulnerable to populist style attacks. To be clear, I'm in no way suggesting that the progressive values shouldn't be championed. And as a first generation Canadian and the father of three daughters, I'm a firm believer in both gender equality and a first hand beneficiary of our country's diversity. It is also true that Canadians should not be asked to make a false choice between the economy and our environment. Both are vital. Yet we must strive to strike a balance between protecting nature and not penalizing hard working taxpayers. My point is that a government's commitment to the progressive values can't be seen to eclipse its commitment to pocketbook priorities. Canadian voters need to be reassured that their ways of life and livelihoods are not under threat. When governments commit to lofty ideals, lowly concerns fall through the cracks. This is what frustrates voters who get exasperated, don't confide in pollsters and then vent their frustration in the privacy of voting booths. Prime Minister Trudeau is right if Canadians are worried about how they and their children will be able to live, work and raise a family in the uncertain economic times we now live in, they become more receptive to extreme solutions. It is the obligation of both Liberals and Conservatives to avoid the polarising rhetoric that pushes the political pendulum sharply to the left or right. 
our leaders must seek to temper their actions and agendas and focus on pocketbook issues. We can't allow the legitimate fear that many Canadians are feeling to degenerate into anger and hatred, or we will all suffer. Angry Americans voted for Donald Trump. Angry Britons voted for Brexit. Let's not see what an angry Canadian would do. Um, I think that is a great article. Uh, it is a prescient warning of what is coming down the road. When you start polarizing people, uh, the fears come up and, as they say, it translates directly into anger. And the extreme left and the extreme right know these political tools and they will pick them up and use them. They will use your anger. You know, what really should have happened in the last election, we should have been in proportional representation, which would have meant that every vote in Ontario counted, and it would have led to a minority government of some kind, not a majority. And this is one of the tools that we can use to temper that anger, because um, right now the disparity of voting between the different um, ridings it is, is quite amazing. You know, we have 72,000 people in the city of Quarter Lakes. It's huge. Uh, you would fit, you know, maybe a quarter of a million people in Mississauga or Toronto in that same ward area. But we only get one seat as uh, you only get one seat. So uh, I think part of this can be ameliorated by having a different kind of voting system. And shame on Justin Trudeau. He promises, this was a platform promise, that this was going to be reviewed and that it would be the last time he would see a first-past-the-post system in Canada. Well, that has not come to pass. And even worse, when a referendum was called for, uh, he called for a referendum with the option to uh, keep the status quo. Well, that, my friend, is not a referendum. A referendum is binding and it is the voice of the people. Anyway, I just thought I'd bring you that uh, single story and I hope you enjoyed it and um, thought it was as balanced as I did and who want to see a situation where we have more tools in the citizens toolbox than having to use one extreme against another or one party feeling that it has to represent uh, the extreme rather than the centre. Okay, so if you enjoyed that, please uh, like and subscribe. And uh, please, you have yourself a great week, and we will talk very soon. Hound Dog Steve, signing off. See you now. Bye.